very quick work. We pulled off to a side here where we're kind of off the side of the road in the middle of the jungle, and we found a Fursa for Miners. This is a lesser chameleon. This is the common name. And what's really interesting is they are the most sexually dimorphic among chameleons. So they don't get much bigger than this. In fact, this is a full-grown female. This female is showing color like this because she is gravid. And for the month that they're gravid, they will show this color. When they're not gravid, it's a little bit more drab. The males are a little bit bigger. They have these appendages on their snouts as well. But as we lose light here, even so, we have just the most spectacular color. We know chameleons change color or at least change the shade of their color. And these are no different as well. The male, a little bit more purple, has a little bit more blues, looks over to make sure I'm not incorrect. Also reds and oranges, where this guy here, or this lady I should say, pretty lady, they've got a gular, or which uh, kind of looks like a dewlap and like a, a knolls or things like that, and it's red. So she kind of puffs it out, shows red, shows the red dots, and her eyes move independently like most chameleons do, and her hands feel like little pinchers, which is hilarious. And the tail is prehensile as well. First of her minor, or a lesser chameleon, and the males are just as beautiful as the females. I just wanted to show you the sexual dimorphism, and I usually think of females being bigger than males as I breed a lot of snakes. With these guys, not the case. So Mike here has the male Fursifer minor or uh, lesser chameleon, and this is the female, the same one we just talked about. I just wanted to show you the difference, and we'll get them away from each other because she's already gravid and she wants nothing to do with this guy's hemipenes. It's a weird thing to say aloud. It's not the first time. Getting around Madagascar is not the easiest thing in the world. This is the battle bus, and this is how we got from point A to point B, on the worst roads that I've ever seen. It's cool finding first of her miners in the trees on the side of the road, but what we're looking for is a little more elusive. Day two is off to a wicked start. Found a whole bunch of geckos at the hotel. We're driving down the street and then Eagle Eyes over here finds this, which is a carpet chameleon. Now I've done a whole bunch of videos about the animals are gonna blow up in this year and that year and almost all of them have carpet chameleons. If there's a chameleon that I was going to keep, it would be a carpet chameleon. And you'll notice this one works at IHOP with only having three legs here. An unbelievable species and this specimen in itself looks like it's a very healthy size. And it's kind of crazy because without a leg, it's an arboreal species, it needs it to climb, but clearly having no issues surviving out here. Just as an advertisement for the coloration or to show the different coloration, now this guy's obviously in shed. They shed just like in captivity in the wild in pieces. And this guy's a different color than the female that we showed and the other one that we showed as well. I just wanted to give you a quick look. Carpet chameleons are definitely different. A whole bunch of color dimorphism and overall just really cool to see that what we see in captivity happens in the wild too. They just keep getting bigger and better. I feel like I'm in an Avatar movie right now. We came to a place where there's a waterfall, which is why you can probably barely hear me. I don't care and neither do you. You came here to look at this face. Maybe the most beautiful chameleon that we've seen so far, but they're going to get bigger and they're going to get better. This one here is a blue-legged chameleon. It doesn't have those blue legs because it's a little bit stressed because it has to come face to face with my ugly mug. When it was in Bill's hands, it had these blue legs. It was giving him bashful eyes. It was super cute, and I'm pretty sure we're shooting a romance right after this one. This one is Columa cryptica, and the reason that it's called that, I would assume, is because of that cryptic pattern that keeps getting a little bit darker as he gets more stressed. But as you can see here, when he's less stressed, it looks almost carpet chameleon-esque in a little bit of a way in that it has that beautiful type of coloration. This is a blue-legged chameleon, and the next one we're gonna see is even bigger than this. Now we can talk about chameleons until we're blue in the face, or I can show you the most magical thing I've ever seen. This is a reptile channel, obviously, and there's a reason that I love reptiles so much. I get asked all the time. It's because I watched television programs when I was a kid. Of course, the Jack Hanna, Steve Irwins, but my favorite creators were the Krat Brothers. So Krat's Creatures, and right after that, Zabumafu. And these are lemurs. I was growing up my entire life watching two guys talk about these animals. The co-host was an animated lemur and the real lemur too. And what we're looking at right now are ringtail lemurs. So one of the most famous or probably the most famous lemur, these are the only primates in Madagascar, lemurs. And the only place on earth you can find ringtails is right here. 
unless you're in a zoo, but we're not. This isn't a zoo, this isn't captivity. There is no caging. You look around, there's mountains everywhere. Animals like these, you only get to see once in a lifetime unless you come here again, but the chances of that, and even so, these animals are endangered. And the fact is, in my lifetime, these animals might not live in the wild anymore. There might be a chance that I never come back here and get to see these guys, and the only other time I ever see them is in captivity. So to say this is a special moment is, uh, there are no words to describe what it's like to, to feel this and to see these animals in their natural habitat. And it might be the only time, one of the last times that a human gets to come here and experience this. These are ringtail lemurs in the wild. I would love to take credit for what we just found, but one of the guides kind of stumbled upon her. You guys know on the channel what I talk about way too much to the point where people call me a Dumeril's boa shill is exactly what that is. It's a Dumeril's boa. We found it in the grass. We're talking about steps away from the road. It is one of the most beautiful specimens I've ever seen. Now I've had a bunch of these in captivity. I've seen a whole bunch. So they do vary in pattern quite a bit. And this is one of the darker ones. Now, of course, it's going to depend what part of Madagascar you find them in. And that is going to be what determines what the pattern is. Because sometimes you find them closer to grass. Sometimes you find them closer to clay. Sometimes you find them closer to what is now a farmland that doesn't have that red soil like the clay. And that that's why some of them come in peaches and some of them don't. If you look all the way around, we see this mountainous region, but we don't see any red clay. And that's why you're not seeing any of those peaches. In fact, you're seeing sand tones. You're seeing some sort of like gray and tan colors. And that is what is going to help them blend in to where they are. Because although they don't really have too many predators out here, you're still not gonna wanna be seen because you also want to eat. And what they're gonna be eating are things like chickens that you're gonna find all the way around here. They're gonna eat small lemurs. They're gonna eat things like rodents. They're gonna eat things like mice and rats and things like that. So this animal here was just hiding underneath one of the trees. And the reason that she's gonna be hiding under the trees is because outside it's about 90 degrees. It's about the same temperature as the surface of the sun. And uh, if under these trees right here, it's only about 26 degrees. So 26 degrees and about 70% humidity. And then you come out here and I would guess it's probably closer to about 50% humidity, 40%. And that's why we always say that you keep these animals around 40 to 60%. And you give them a humid hide because they're gonna be able to thermoregulate not just the temperature, but also their gradient with humidity too. So I'm gonna put this girl exactly back where you found her. Just one of the coolest snakes that we got to find. And uh, the fact that she's this cool, calm and collected in the wild is not something I was expecting. Dormal's boas are what I came here to see. I couldn't be happier that I got to find one. of this whole video is behind the scenes. So we just talked about that Dumeril's boa and we're walking up here and I could just easily go, oh, we found a Sanzinia. That's exactly what you see here. And the reason is uh, sometimes we have gui guides and the guides are what kind of help us find everything. So we had Dave go film with the Dumeril, with the Sanzinia rather. We're filming with the Dumeril's and then we switch. So we do find everything in the wild. Nothing is planted here, nothing is placed. Anyway, this is how the sausage is made. I usually don't do this in videos, but I wanted to let you see it. Thanks for hitting subscribe. And if you haven't already, button's right there. Let's go talk about a Sanzinia. And this is where you'd expect to find a Sanzinia because this is where they are. They are a tree boa. Now this is the other species of Sanzinia. There are two. One's gonna be a little bit greener. One's gonna be a little bit more brown. And the more brown one also is going to have a more bulldog-like head. It's a much thicker head. It's more blunt. And that's what we see here. Now this is a full size, when I, I would guess a female. They don't get that big, but this branch is bending under her weight. They're a heavy bodied snake, not as heavy bodied as the Dumeril's boa, of course, because in general, you're gonna find that ground rolling boas are gonna be heavier bodied than boas that are gonna be found up in the trees. So this is a beautiful snake and we're gonna leave her exactly where she is. We already talked about one and manhandled her and I'm probably gonna come back and manhandle her anyway, but see you in a bit. So what we've got here is chameleon, chameleon-esque. Now this is a Cuban false chameleon, so it is not the correct type of chameleon that you find on this island. It's invasive. Bill Strand, who specializes 
in False Chameleons, and Sanzinia's and Doomroll's Boas is the one who brought her here in the first place. So he's very excited about that. Now, of course, she's going to grow horns as she ages, and the reason that she does this is to joust the boas that are going to eat her. Now, of course, the males have uh, do not have the hemipenes, the females do, and their tail is purely for show. There's no reason to have it otherwise. Now, of course, they are a fixed-eyed snake and have fixed fangs as well. Very <laughs> venomous species. Am I getting this right? I'm not here. I'm not supervising this. <laughs> All right, I guess I can do whatever Bill says next. <laughs> a Malagasy giant chameleon. Now, I'm not gonna go long on this. Now, she's a little bit of a jumper, so I can kind of tell that that's where she wants to go. These are animals that are gonna be great in captivity. If you can find them, they do get really, really large, and if you get one that wants to bite you, I'd get out of the way of it. But you don't want her to jump because she might make an omelet out of her insides and in that she is very gravid. She's gonna lay a whole bunch of eggs, and I'm gonna put her back where she came from before she uh, eats herself off me again. Madagascar is a special place during the day, magical. But at night, the sights and sounds are something I have to share. It is foggy and we're looking for froggies. And that's all I can hear and I know we're gonna find them. We're at Random Fauna National Park. I'm super stoked about it. Let's go find some frogs. This is a tree frog. I actually love tree frogs. I do a whole bunch of videos about them and I keep every species that I can get my hands on, but this is something you don't really find in the hobby. This is a white-lipped, bright-eyed frog. This guy right here, the way he just cocked his head, he's got these amazing red eyes, kind of reminiscent of a red-eye tree frog, which you find in Central and South America. I did a whole video right here you can watch about them, but these guys have a very different webbing on their feet, on their front hands, I guess. They've got almost what looks like a dew claw and a dog kind of coming off of their thumb pad. I imagine these guys could climb glass like every other frog. They look very similar to other frogs. Maybe if like a white tree frog and a red eye tree frog made a baby and it was half the size, that's kind of what it looks like. This is one of the larger frogs and of course he's hopping away. This is a full size adult. We heard him calling. We know that there's a female in the area and I'm super excited that we got to see what is probably the biggest frog that we might see tonight in Madagascar. These trips are so much fun because there's a whole bunch of back and forth and learning and I'm getting chirped from up in the mountain here. This is an O'Shaughnessy's chameleon. So what I've learned from Bill Strand, I highly recommend you check his channel. He's helped a lot with this video. This animal right here is very similar to a Parsons chameleon, except for it is much smaller, obviously. For example, we haven't talked about them yet. Parsons chameleons are about the size of my forearm and this guy is about a third of it. So the males, this is a female, will have a rostral process or basically a twin blade nose horn. That's what they're gonna look like. Now what's really interesting to me is the way that it curls its tail. Now this isn't the only chameleon that does that. A lot of chameleons do have a prehensile tail, but just the fact that it's at rest at night, this is not when they are going to be active. Just like most chameleons or any of them that I know, they are a diurnal species. So this animal is gonna be out moving and grooving tomorrow, looking for animals to throw its tongue at and put back in its mouth as fast as possible, just like you've seen in the movies. But right now it's trying to sleep and we are bugging the heck out of her. I'm gonna go bug her boyfriend in a sec because there's a male one over there. But either way, one of the cooler ones, I think she's beautiful. One of the best ones in captivity too. Is she gonna make the top five best chameleons in captivity list? You're gonna have to hit subscribe and we'll talk about it next week. The first part of our Madagascar trip truly was a dream come true, but the best is yet to come. Hit the like button if you'd like to see the biggest chameleons in the world, satanic leaf tail geckos, a whole bunch of boas, and truly the most magical thing I've ever experienced. Lemur is using us as a jungle gym. All that and more, I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, 1016, uh, roger that, 1016, we got a bad one. We got O'Shaughnessy on. Uh, male green, last seen on tree branch. <laughs> <laughs>